Welcome to our tutorial about the Flow Layout Panel. This panel allows us to add controls dynamically. We're then able to lay them out vertically or horizontally. Let me drag in the Flow Layout Panel from the toolbox. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Now I'm going to add a couple text boxes and a button. We drag and drop them in. Now let's give our control some appropriate names. We will call this text box TXT name. For the text property value, we'll enter name as well. Now let's do the second text box. We'll call it TXT text. And for the text property, we'll enter the string text. Now let's modify our button. Add. Now let's write some code. I'll pause the video while I type in the code. I'm back. Here I've created a new text box control. In lines 5 and 6, we assign values to the name and text properties of the newly created text box control. Next, we use the add method to add the newly created control to the control collection flow layout panel. Okay, let's run and see how it works. Click add. Add again. One one. One one add. One 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 add. One 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 add, and so on. Let's add a couple more. As you see, we can virtually add an unlimited number of controls. Let me change this to a button. And we'll change the variable as well. You see here that I have to change the same variable in three different places. But when I mouse over my variable, I have a very useful drop down option available to me rename new text box to new button. Let's select this. Now the variable new text box has been renamed new button everywhere in my code. Let's run our program again. Name 2, text 2, add. Name 3, text 3, add. And so on. This just gives you a basic idea of how the flow layout panel works. There are many options here. We can enable auto scroll. If the auto scroll property is set to true, this gives us the possibility to insert virtually an unlimited number of controls. When your controls reach the right margin, they can move to the next row instead of going off of the box's field of view. That's because the wrap property is set to true. We can also control the flow direction from left to right, top down, right to left, and bottom up, and so on. Now I'm going to pause my video and quickly create an example where I can use a flow layout panel. Okay, I'm back. First, let's run our program to see how it works. Let's enter a two digit number here, say 99. And my program created 99 text box controls inside the flow layout panel. Now let's follow the instructions down below here. Think of any two digit number, for example, 16. 
Subtract the sum of the digits. 1 plus 6 is 7. And the result of the calculation is 9. 16 minus 7 is 9. Now locate this number on the table. In my case, it's right here. And when you're ready, click on the square. I'm going to give you a few seconds in which to follow these instructions. Just pause the video. Okay, have you got your number? Let's see if the quadrant gives us the right answer. Pretty spooky, huh? Let's reset it and try it again. I'll give you a couple more seconds to select a number. Let's try it again. Cool game, yeah? Let's go into our code to see how it works. First, we retrieved a two-digit number from the text box txt1, and we assigned it to integer d. Next, I created a for loop. The for loop is executed the number of times based on the number the user entered in the text box. At line 15, I generated a random number and stored it in integer c. Next, I used the chr function to convert this number to a letter. Remember the ASCII table which we looked at in a previous tutorial. The number 65 represents an uppercase A. That's why I've added the number 65 here. And that's how we ended up with random numbers between 65 and 75. Next, we stored integer A, space, and the letter we just created in string A. In the next line, we created a new text box control. And here we assign the name and width of the text box control. Next, we've got the if statement. And that's where the magic gets created. Basically, you subtract the sum of the digits of your chosen number. It doesn't matter which number you choose. You're always going to end up with 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, 63, 72, 81. Some multiple of 9. Let's take a look at the if routine. If integer a equals 9, or if integer a equals 18, or so on, if this requirement is met, then these two lines of code will be executed. Instead of using integer c, which is randomly created each time the for loop is executed, we actually use integer b, which is generated before the for loop. As a result, the letter in the corresponding boxes, 9, 18, 27, and so on, stayed constant. Now let's go to the else statement. That's how the rest of the boxes get a random letter. Now let's look at the last line. As in the previous example, we're using the add method to add a new control to the control collection or flow layout panel. Last thing here, the first line removes all the controls from the collection before new controls are added. Next, when the user clicks on the square, the value stored in string B is assigned to the text property of label 1. And of course, string B is declared as a string right here, and it's visible for all events inside this form. One more thing here to go through. On Form 1's lock procedure, what this does is create a truly random seed for the RND function. The RND function, or the randomize function, uses the system time as a new seed value. If randomize is not used, the RND function will use the same number as the seed the first time it's called. As a result, we end up with the same value. Let me demonstrate. Let's comment this part out. Now let's enter our two-digit number, let's say 60, reset. Notice we've got the letter H in quadrants 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, and 54. If I restart the program, 
Let's do it again. We'll enter 77 and reset. We end up with the letter H in all of these quadrants. Let's stop the program. Now we'll uncomment line 37 and start again. Now let's enter another number, 66, and reset. I end up with a random letter here now. Let's close our program. And this concludes our tutorial about using the Flow Layout Panel.